today I'm going to be making a bodysuit. The materials you're going to need for this project are jersey fabric, which stretches in one direction. And I used about one yard for this project. Obviously the amount you need is going to depend on your size. Something to make a pattern on like newspaper, craft paper, I'm using butcher's paper, and some fold over elastic. And you're gonna wanna grab a couple of yards slash meters of this as well. And of course all your standard sewing equipment, thread, scissors, sewing machine, etc. All right, let's get started. You will also need a tight fitting singlet top and your favorite pair of underwear as this is going to be what we base our pattern off. The first thing that I did was to put on my singlet top and a good fitting pair of underwear and I made a mark of where the two overlapped. Then I placed these two items of clothing down on top of some pattern paper and I put pins in that spot where they overlapped to turn the two into a kind of one piece item of clothing. Next, I grabbed the clothes in the middle and I folded them in half lengthways so that the front of the singlet top and the underwear were on the outside of the fold. I laid this down on top of my pattern paper, taking care to make sure that it was laying nice and flat and perfectly folded in half. Then I grabbed a pencil and I made note of where the gusset of the underwear begins. If you didn't know, the gusset is the part of the underwear that has a double layer and looks like this. It's the crotch bit. Next, I traced around the whole thing like this, excluding the gusset, straight down onto my pattern paper. To trace out this leg hole section here, without moving the clothing and mucking up the pattern, I grabbed a pin and I made little holes by poking the pin down into the pattern paper underneath. I then used this as a kind of dot to dot and I joined the small holes on the pattern paper up with a pencil. Then tracing around the entire shape with a pen, I ended up with this, my front pattern. Then grabbing my singlet underwear thing again, I unfolded it and then I folded it lengthways in the other direction so that the back of the singlet and the underwear are now facing out. Again, I took care in folding it so that it was folded in half perfectly, side seams matching up, and then I traced around it like this, again, excluding the gusset. The last piece that I need to trace out is that gusset. Again, I folded the piece in half before tracing. So the gusset is this shape here, the entire part of the underwear that's composed of two layers instead of one. So I traced around this shape, again using that pin method to make holes in the paper underneath when there was fabric in the way. The straight edge of the gusset pattern will also be placed on the fold of the fabric when cutting the fabric out. And here's all three of the pattern pieces that I'll be using to make this bodysuit. You should draw a little note onto the pattern in case you forget that the pattern will need to be placed down onto the fabric with the stretch running in this direction. And also that the straight edges will need to be placed on the fabric's fold. So I cut the pattern pieces out along the lines and now it's time to use them to cut out some fabric. I placed my jersey fabric down on my sewing table folded over once with the fold here. And then I placed my front pattern piece down onto this fabric so that the straight edge is aligned with the fold in the fabric. I then cut around the pattern using my rotary cutter and unfolded the front piece looks like this. I did the exact same thing for the gusset pieces except that I cut out two of these instead of one. And I did the same thing for the back piece. So all up, I've now got these four pieces of fabric. Now it's time to construct the bodysuit. First, we will start with the gusset. I placed the two gusset pieces together like this, right sides together, and I sewed down the sides using a straight stitch. I then turned the gusset inside out so that the seams are now on the inside of this piece. Next, I lined the thinner end of the gusset up with the front piece of the bodysuit, everything facing right sides up, and then I placed the gusset onto the bottom of the front piece like this, right sides together. Then using a zigzag stitch, and you could also use a serger, I sewed the front piece and the gusset together like this. Next, I placed the back piece right sides down on top of the front, lined up the side seams, put pins through both sides to hold them together, and I sewed straight down the side seams like this. And this is also done either using a zigzag stitch or a serger. Lastly, I flipped this over and I sewed the gusset to the back piece using a zigzag stitch like this. And now the basic bodysuit has been constructed, and I totally forgot to get a good shot of this step. My bad, but basically it looks like this, but with the bottom seam all sewed up. Next up, I'm going to add fold over elastic as a contrasting finishing to the neckline, underarms and leg holes. So I'm adding it to all of the raw edges, as you can see how I've done it in the finished product here. Now, let me introduce you all to this new love of my life, my new obsession, fold over elastic. Fold over elastic looks like this. It's got a straight line down the middle and it has one shiny side and one matte side. 
That line down the middle allows you to easily fold the elastic over in half. This type of elastic gives you a super quick and simple professional looking finishing for raw edges, especially on stretchy fabric, which is why I now love it so much. So first I turn the bodysuit right sides out. Using a zigzag stitch, the next step is to sew the fold over elastic to the wrong side of the fabric. That line down the center of the elastic should line up with the raw edge of the material. So over at my sewing machine here, I used a normal width zigzag stitch to sew the elastic onto the wrong side of the bodysuit. While I was sewing, I also stretched the fold over elastic just a little bit, which will make the elastic sit nice and flat when I'm done and also give the bodysuit a good close fit. Also note that I have the shiny side facing up because I want the matte side to be visible when I'm done. I also didn't cut the elastic until I reached the other side. When I got to the other end, I clipped the elastic about one inch longer than the material's edge. You'll see why I've done this in just a bit. Now here's the fold over part. Because the elastic folds over at the center, I simply folded it over in half towards the right side of the fabric. Then I put this back under my sewing machine and using a much narrower zigzag stitch this time, one that's about half the width of the zigzag I used before, I sewed the elastic down onto the right side of the material with my needle as close to the elastic's edge as possible. And that's how you apply fold over elastic. It's really quick, easy to do, and gives this really nice looking finishing to the raw edges. Anyway, enough about how much I love fold over elastic. I then did the exact same thing for the rest of the neckline and the armholes. Then to apply the elastic to the leg holes, I did the same thing, but I left an overlap of about an inch of elastic when I came back around to the start. I then grabbed a lighter and I ran it very quickly over this cut edge to stop it from fraying. And then I folded the elastic over and sewed it in exactly the same way as I did for the armholes and the neckline. Back to the top of the bodysuit, I used that same lighter trick to prevent the ends of the fold over elastic from fraying by quickly running the lighter over those edges for two to three seconds. Then I grabbed another two pieces of elastic to use as my straps. I'm actually using the remainder of my fold over elastic sewn in half, but proper lingerie strap elastic would also be a good option. I am now going to attach each strap to the front of the bodysuit here. Notice how the bodysuit tapers off into a triangle shape with two pieces of overhanging fold over elastic. So I inserted one end of a strap into these overhanging fold over elastic pieces like this and I sewed it to the rest of the elastic like this. Then I repeated this for the other strap. Once both of the straps were sewn to the front of the bodysuit, I tried it on, bringing the elastic over my shoulder and seeing where it meets the back, and then cutting the elastic strap to this length. And I did this for both straps. Then I inserted each of the elastic straps into the fold over elastic on the back of the bodysuit in exactly the same way as I did for the front, making sure the straps weren't twisted as I did so, and I'm done. And this is how it looks. I'm mainly planning on wearing this bodysuit with cute high-waisted things like shorts and skirts and jeans. The advantages of wearing a bodysuit as a top is that it doesn't come untucked and it stays close fitting to your body. And I also think I'll do a version later that has a snap closure at the crotch so that I don't have to get naked every time I go to the bathroom. But hey, if you're trying to recreate this and you want to add snap closures, it'd be pretty easy. Just don't sew one end of the gusset to the main bodysuit part and sew on some snap closures instead. But for the second ever bodysuit I've ever made, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Okay, thanks for watching. You should totally go follow me on social media if you aren't already. And a huge thank you to my supporters on my Patreon page because of my Patreons, I was able to get this. This is my new sewing workstation and because I suffer with a lot of chronic pain and fatigue, this is so much easier to work on. I don't have to lie down like several times every time I try and sew and film a video. It's awesome. <laughs> and my supporters helped me to raise the money so that I could get this. So thank you so much to my Patreon family. If you want to become a Patreon supporter and watch the silly vlogs that I make that don't make it to the YouTube channel and special things that I do just for my patrons, you should check it out here. And of course, if you can't afford to become a supporter, that's totally cool as well. Instead, you can share my videos with your friends and subscribe. All right, self-promo time over. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye. I rely on my fans to keep me going. To become my Patreon supporter and to help me continue making these videos, visit patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.